We're also joined at this stage by Salman Khan, founder of Khan Academy. Uh, Mr. Khan, great speaking to you. How do we uh, make digital education more accessible to low-income households? How do we address, for example, the challenges of technology? There is varying internet stability, the lack of devices. How do we address that to make this all workable? Yeah, I think it's a combination of a push and a pull, and we're seeing this around the world, especially during the pandemic. We've seen, frankly, heroic efforts on the part of governments, corporations, philanthropists, school districts to try to push devices, push internet access out into the world. It's especially difficult if you think globally, but especially in areas like India or when you think about rural areas. I do think that's where the role of government has to play a role. The You're starting to have these low Earth orbiting satellites, things like Starlink from SpaceX. I think things like that can play a role. But it's got to be a joint effort by philanthropy, government, and corporations to ensure that everyone has access. Because once you have that, a lot of other services can be built on top of that. And then the pull aspect of it is, if we can build services that exist on these digital platforms, where people realize, if I can get my family a reasonable broadband, if I can get them reasonable devices, they can get free education. They can get free tutoring. I have a platform, schoolhouse.world, which is free tutoring for anyone in India or, or around the world. Uh, when people realize that those types of services that have a lot of value to them get unlocked once they have digital access, then I also think the digital access becomes more compelling. That not only gives them access to education, that gives them access to economic opportunities, to looking for jobs, to staying socially connected as well. Mr. Khan, what are some of the lessons that India can learn from the world uh, with regards to making education more accessible to the lesser privileged? Well, I think it's both. I think there's a lot that the rest of the world uh, can learn from India because I think India is one of the places where things are not ideal in terms of digital access, but uh, is making strides in low-cost devices, low-cost uh, cellular access. Uh, you know, what we see around the world is a big push to getting digital in schools. The, in the United States, what we've seen, there's something called the E-rate program, where they taxed a little bit of everyone's cell phone bills so that they can get high quality broadband and devices inside of schools. And what I, we've seen over the last 10 years in the United States, it's now pretty commonplace for schools to have internet access. And I think something like that in India would be very powerful. It would also make people gravitate towards the schools even more, not just the the children, but frankly, even the adults in, say, a town or a village would then get gravitated to the school, maybe out of school hours, so that they too can access the internet, even if they don't have it at home. Hi, Salman. Good to have you here. I just want to ask you a slightly technical question because you are so involved in education uh, in your life. How do we make digital teaching and digital learning as effective as face to face physical? Uh, that that is a challenge we must overcome, right? This is one of the more interesting things about digital learning is not only is it a way to learn, but it's a way to take control of your learning. What we're hearing from schools around the world during the pandemic is some, some students struggled having more independence, having to do things at home, but some students really thrived. And the reality is it's important to learn your reading comprehension, your writing, learning your uh, how to factor a polynomial, but perhaps the most important skill over the, the coming decades is learning how to learn. And so right now we have an opportunity leveraging technology, ideally in conjunction with a physical classroom, to start to personalize to the needs of students, allow them to learn at their own time and pace, allow them to fill in their gaps. And we have the ability now with platforms like schoolhouse.world to give free tutoring. The way that we can give free tutoring is that we have high quality volunteer tutors from around the world who are able to connect with whoever is watching uh, children. And then these students can go on to become tutors themselves. So I'm really fascinated with how technology can unlock human to human interaction, either through a platform like Schoolhouse Without World where it's happening directly, or on things like Khan Academy where if students are able to get some of their lectures or their practice at their own time and pace, then when they get into the classroom, they can have more interaction. Thanks so much for, uh, for being a part of this program.